Hey guys, this is Jill with Gateway Worship, and today we are going to spend a little time learning about the Nashville number system and applying those numbers to our worship service vocal charts. All of our songs are put into different keys, and each of these keys have a major scale, which should sound very familiar to you. La 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 la. We are now going to assign a number to each step of the major scale, and as the pitch gets higher, the number gets higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I use sev because it's only one syllable like the rest of the numbers, so you may hear me say that a few times. Also, instead of singing eight, I'm going to call that a one again because it's the same note as the first time when we sang one, just in a higher octave. As we move up and down the scale using the numbers, we will often move higher or lower than just those original eight numbers. Here, you can see our main numbers going up to seven, but then as we get to the next one, because it's higher than the original one, we are going to put an apostrophe after it. If I were singing all of these numbers, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. And I could even keep going from there. Now, here you see our main numbers descending, but as we get lower than our original numbers, we will put an underline to show that they are lower than our main octave. Here's what this will sound like. One, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four. Again, it could keep going lower. To get better acclimated in singing in numbers, we have some number exercises available to practice with. Some of these are written out visually, and some are audio tracks that you can practice with. I encourage you to work with those so that you can get more and more accustomed to moving around using numbers. You may be wondering how in the world are numbers going to help us when we're singing notes? Well, each one of those numbers is going to represent a note of the major scale, and we are going to apply those to different words as we're singing songs. In the song Deliverance, for example, we start off with the lyrics, Jesus, you are my deliverance, from death to life, from dark to light. Here, you will see that there are numbers above each and every syllable. And again, those numbers represent the pitches in the major scale. For instance, we have the word Jesus with a one, one written above it. One, one, Jesus. Even though those are the same notes, you will still see a number above each of the syllables. So for the first part of that line, our numbers are one, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, three, which will be Jesus, you are my deliverance. Remember, each one of those numbers represents the pitches of the major scale. As you follow those numbers along, it helps you to know exactly what notes to sing for those lyrics. Finally, the full line in numbers will sound like this. One, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, three, one, four, three, one, one, four, three, one, two, which will then be sung as Jesus, you are my deliverance from death to life, from dark to light. When we have the one line by itself, this is our melody. But sometimes we have more than one line, and those represent different harmonies that help to enhance what we're doing in the different sections of the song. Let's look at our line from Deliverance again. If you look at the numbers directly above the lyrics, you'll notice these are the melody notes that we have already looked at. Above them, you will see a whole new set of numbers. In the key that I was originally singing in, my one sounded like this. One, then two, three, the three is my starting pitch for this line of harmony. So now our harmony line will sound like this. Three, three, four, five, five, three, four, five, five, three, six, five, three, three, six, five, three, four. Then with the lyrics, it sounds like, Jesus, you are my deliverance from death to life from dark to light. When these two parts are put together at the same time, 
we create a beautiful harmony that works along with the chords that are being played in the song. So it's very important to make sure that you're singing the correct harmonies because they've been designed and developed to go right along with the music. The first line above the lyrics is the melody. The line above that is a harmony above that. But sometimes we like to enhance it even more by adding a third line of harmony. Let's take a look once again at deliverance. And notice on the word Jesus, our melody of course is one, one. And then we have the next line up, which is the harmony three, three. And then our final line of harmony goes five, five. As you take a look at this line, notice when we get to the one that it has the apostrophe next to it. That means that it's going to be the high one instead of just a regular one below that. So when we sing this line, it ends up sounding like this. Five, five, six, one, one, five, six, seven, seven, five, two, one, five, five, two, one, six. And with the lyrics, it's Jesus, you are my deliverance from death to life, from dark to light. And then once again, when it's all put together with the other parts, it goes beautifully with the chords to enhance the sound of the song. We will be using the traditional vocal labels, soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone. We have soprano, which is the upper female part, alto, the lower female, tenor, the upper male part, which a few low-voiced females might sing, and baritone, the lower male part. We also use an L for lead, which means everyone is singing the melody. Once again, let's take a look at our line of music from Deliverance. To the left of the melody line on the bottom, you will see T slash B. That means tenors and baritones are all going to be singing melody. Now the tenor is also uppercase and bold print to show that this line is the melody line. Above that in the first harmony line is S slash A which stands for sopranos and altos. A lot of times we will only use two parts when we're singing our songs. So that is why we have all of our females on that middle harmony line. But sometimes we do go ahead and add that third part. So I put the soprano in parentheses for the top line to show that if we wanna add that top line, those are the people that will sing that line. A quick side note about our terminology here at Gateway. In many musical settings, you'll hear the term background vocalist used to refer to the singers on mic singing with the lead singer. Here at Gateway, we use the term frontline vocalist because we want our language to not only establish that our singers are valuable, but also to reiterate that our worship is warfare and we are part of that frontline army. So back to looking at our vocal chart, we use the FLV or frontline vocal map to show us the map of the song, as well as to tell us, as frontline vocals, when we're supposed to sing and when we're not supposed to sing. Going down the left-hand column, you will see the map of the song. V stands for verse, C for chorus, PC stands for pre-chorus, and B stands for bridge. Going down the right-hand column is our instructions as FLVs. An X means we are not going to sing into the microphone, though we will always need to be singing. L stands for singing lead or melody, P stands for parts, and sometimes you may even see 2P or 3P. When there's a 2P, you're going to only sing two parts at that time, even if three parts are written, or a 3P means three parts at that time. PL means prime lead, and that means that everyone is going to sing in the exact same octave, which usually means that the guys are going to jump up the octave and sing the exact same note that the girls are singing. This FLV map is usually followed each time the song is sung, but depending on your worship leader or vocal director, it may change from time to time. Okay, now it's time to look at the entire chart at the same time. You'll see going down the page, we have the different sections of the song, the verses, the chorus, the bridge, and each lyric has a number above every single syllable. Notice again in the chorus, we have three parts listed. That top line where the soprano is in the parentheses means that you may or may not use that part. That will depend on your worship leader. And then over on the right-hand column is the FLV map. Look at it carefully as you're rehearsing through the song so that you can make sure you're singing the correct thing at the correct time. 
This particular chart is for a male lead, as stated in the title. This means that a guy is leading the song. If a female is leading the song, there is a separate vocal chart that says female lead. Make sure you are aware of who is leading each song so you choose the correct vocal chart. Sometimes they can be a little different from each other. All right, it's our responsibility to work hard with these vocal charts and be prepared before we come to each of our services. Memorize them, work on them with friends, and have fun.